pro cam here. I bought an antenna. Let's talk about it. So you might know that uh, my wife and I made a deal that if I passed my extra, she would let me buy any radio I want and an antenna to go with it. For the hardest thing I think was to pick out the antenna because uh, I knew she wouldn't want a big like hex beam on the roof or a, a step IR or something. So what uh, I did was I looked for something that would blend in some kind of stealth antenna. So I heard a lot of great things about the Alpha Antenna HOA Buster. So I settled on that and I had some questions because I noticed that you're supposed to connect to the downspout. But for me, my downspout's on the other side of the house. So I emailed their uh, support line, or I guess it's just the email right on top, alphaantenna.gmail.com. We can take a look here. So here's the here's their website. Here's the email that I sent an email to. Uh, this is the unit here. It's a little matching unit. Uh, some wire to go to the gutter and uh, a ground spike and then um, the ground spike mount. And then you can also get it in different colors, which is nice. So you can match whatever house you're going for. So uh, you can get a bag if you want. I don't need a bag. This is, this is my, my, this is my permanent install antenna. So I got mine in the uh, dark brown and uh, I got 50 feet of coax to go with it. Before I purchased, I wanted to make sure that my situation would work. So I had sent an email to them and all I did was I went to Google Street View, pulled up a, uh, took a screenshot and I just put it into paint and I just started drawing on it. And I said like, I put a little key here and I just said like, hey, I said I included this diagram. I just wanted to know, I, I've got two possible configurations what do you think would work best? To my surprise, they replied within, uh, let me see. I sent it at 2.27 p.m. and they replied at 2.34 p.m. Uh, it was also uh, Steven, the president of the company that replied. So that top-notch customer service in my opinion. Uh, but you see, uh, this is a kind of, so my shack is this window. So I was thinking that wire to the gutter here and feed line up and then either up through the window or through the wall or uh, potentially through the wall and then up. Or my downspouts are over here. So do I connect it here and then run a feed line all the way through to my shack? And uh, he had pointed out that like, uh, it really doesn't matter. It's the, it kind of just changes the directionality of it a bit. So. What it, I'm going to read his email. So it says, uh, use A if you want your signal to go a little more right and use B if you want your signal to go a little more, a little more left, which works for me. So that's, so that's, uh, left would be more kind of like Northwestern ish. So that's the side that I settled on. I also thought that running the coax here would be a lot easier, uh, rather than having to go into the attic and then up into this attic and then back down. I just figured like I, at least for testing, I could just chuck a wire out the window and hook it up and test. So that's what I did. So coming back to the specs here, we could see that we've got uh, 10 through 80 and we've got 440 and 900, uh, a max power of 250, which is fine for me. Cause I'm uh, I just got a hundred watt is what I just got. So for now that'll work for me. Uh, only 25 watts are digital modes, but that's, that's okay. Uh, so it comes with uh, everything that was shown in that picture up there. You've got the matching network, which is just that PVC brick thing. You got a spike mount and you've got a, it comes with an eight foot jumper wire. But Steve said in my email, if I go to the top, if I go to the top of this gutter here, he says that you're going to need more. So just include that in the notes when you buy. Just tell me how long you want. I think I made it a little too long and I'll show you some pictures here. Um, but I would rather have a little too long than too short. So if we scroll on down here, we can see that the deployment, uh, this is the, the typical deployment is that you hook it up to the downspout. So we put uh, one connector here to your gutter and then one to the matching unit. And it just clips on to uh, the, uh, oh, a piece of metal hanging down that 
uh, completes the connection. And then you just stick this in the ground, make sure it's taut, not touching the ground, and you're good to go. All right, so I got it installed. Uh, I did have to borrow a friend's ladder because uh, I don't have a ladder that goes up that high. It was It's about uh, 19, 20 feet off the ground. So I had a buddy come over, we set up a ladder. Uh, I walked up there and if you look at the, uh, what the kit comes with, that's not it. If you look at what the kit comes with, can I make this bigger? It comes with these uh, clips. You're just supposed to clip it on. And I knew that I was gonna have to borrow a ladder if I ever wanted to take this down or put it up. And I didn't want the chance of having like the wind uh, knock the clip off uh, or something like that. So what I did was I actually took this off. It's just held in with a ring terminal and a screw. And uh, I just put a, a self tap and screw into my uh, gutter. And so the final install from the front, that's all you can see. It's just this one wire and you see it comes and you see the angle here is kind of why I think I made the wire too long is because I had to go back kind of far to make it tight. So uh, if you look here, this is, you can kind of see it right here. That's the wire and then there's the matching unit. It blends in really well. And then this right here is the feed line, uh, which for now I just have hanging out my window. So here it is from uh, where you can see both ends of the wire. You got one here. That's where I put the self tapper. Shoom. It comes straight down. I made sure that this wire was on top of all of these trees. So if the wind blows it or something, or if a branch falls down, it's not going to take the whole thing with it. Uh, and then there is this uh, feed line, which just goes up here. And I just got it sticking out of the window right now. Uh, eventually I'm either going to go uh, through the siding here. I've got, I've got three possible scenarios I'm going to do. I'm going to go through the siding here. I'm going to go up into the uh, attic here and then drop it back down on the other side. Or uh, what I would most like to do is what I was talking about before, where I go into the sidewall kind of, kind of around here somewhere and uh, bring it inside the house and then come up to about here. Cause there's a void. I got a void space here that I could run the wire through. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. But for now, it's just hanging out the side of the window. So and you can't see it from the street because I have this big tree here. Uh, it's just another angle here. And then here's a closer look at, at the unit. So I have the wire coming down here. Uh, and this was before I weatherproofed it. I've since weatherproofed it. And then you have this here. And the most important thing with this is just make sure that the uh, radiating element is not touching the ground. And th those are all the pictures I have of that. Uh, so well, let's look at some uh, uh, performance. Like how far have I gotten out with my HOA buster? All right. So this is my log book. Uh, you can see this is back in March. And then I've got a big gap here. And then here it is, the first, uh, I put QSL, first QSL on my new antenna. Uh, that was William. Where was William at? He's in Foreland, which is Nevada. So that was an FT8 contact. Uh, I was able to hit Poland and Spain and France and Croatia and Germany. Uh, and these are all FT8. So you can kind of get really far with, with the, the digital on this. And then we've got Russia, Poland. Ukraine, Romania, uh, Canada, and then I think I'm in up here. Yeah. I started making some single side bands. Uh, so where was he at? He was in Arizona. Uh, he sounded great. Um, I think he was having a little trouble hearing me and that is just me learning my antenna and learning my, I've got a new radio as well that I don't fully know all the capabilities of. Um, I've figured out my tuner and everything with that. So, uh, once I tuned it up, you can, he heard me really well. Uh, then there's 
We've got a couple uh, single side bands. Uh, or there is this one, uh, Pennsylvania. I uh, got another Pennsylvania. I've got an Alabama, uh, New Hampshire, and another Alabama. They were having the Alabama QSO party that day, so they were easy pickings that day. Uh, but I was able to hit Wales and Venezuela and Portugal. And I even, uh, this night, this uh, 728, I was even able to hear uh, Israel, but I couldn't get him to call back to me. So he was way down in the noise. He was like a 20 minus 23, 24, which is I think right at the limit of FT8. So I'm still chasing my... I'm still chasing my Asia. I'm still chasing my Asia and my my Oceana uh, QSOs. But this antenna is great because it's not only uh, HOA proof, which the HOA 11 is is very relaxed and chill. So that's not what I'm worried about with that. Um, what I'm more worried about is that it's wife approved. Uh, she's happy that I don't have a big hex beam on top of the roof. I'll soften her up on that. I'll work on it. But uh, for now, she's not crazy about the idea of having a big antenna on the roof. Another great thing about this antenna is that you don't have to get on your roof to do it. The only reason I had to get up on a ladder is because I didn't want to run a feed line all the way across my house. But if you're somebody who either can't or won't get up on your roof, this is a great option for you because you can just clip this to your downspout and then just run your wire along the edge of the building. Uh, your feed line and then run it up into a window and then you can you're on the air so besides having some rfi issues in the shack i'm able to make some pretty good uh, contacts i think that this is a great antenna system i think that the customer service is amazing i've heard uh great things about their mag loops and uh i think some of their other stuff is is pretty cool i would definitely consider this if you're looking to get some kind of low profile antenna that you can kind of just stick in a bush and just have a discrete wire hook up to your gutter. And now you're on the air and you don't have to climb on your roof or anything. So I think that's a wise $250 for me to spend to get a potential up to 250 watt antenna capacity that I can use. Uh, and it supports 10 through 80, 440 and 900. One thing I would like to do since it supports 900 is I would like to see if I can hook my mesh-tastic stuff up to it. If I get any good range benefits from that those is the bro cam saying 73 and sometimes you buy it instead of building it